Hi, I'm Doug Stapleton, and I'm an Associate Curator of Art with the Illinois State Museum. And I'm here to take you on a kind of brief tour of our work, People Art Exhibition, which is all artwork from the uh, Depression era, WPA era, um, from our permanent collection here at the Ukrainian Institute of Modern Art. And so come along for this uh, kind of brief overview of the exhibition. Um, so a little background on this, the, uh, the, Mer the, the Depression in the United States was a particularly important time in our history, and that uh, spans from 1929 to 1939. Those are the years that are referred to as the Great Depression. And it's a time when uh, many, almost like 20% of the American public found themselves without employment. And those who did work were really struggling to get by. Essentially, our economy collapsed. Uh, but um, the response to this was very slow in coming. And it wasn't until uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president, uh, and then in 1933, that he enacted a series of progressive and really far-reaching um, relief reform uh, programs that were meant to basically get the country back on track. And this is referred to as the New Deal, which is a blanket term for all these relief and reform and um, uh, uh, public projects, building projects that took place during this time. So there's a lot to that history, and I'm not going to get bogged down in that. As much to say that what was really extraordinary about this time besides the reach of all these programs, was the fact that artists came along for the journey uh, as part of the New Deal. And this was built into the program from the start. Um, and it was the first time that the federal government had brought in artists as a way to offer them support and relief, but also to bring a sort of artistic expression to the American scene, to American life. Uh, at a time that had never really been seen before. And uh, one of the biggest programs was the Federal Art Project, which was part of the WPA, the Works Progress, Art Progress Administration. Uh, and the Federal Art Project uh, basically employed artists to make work uh, for a monthly stipend and materials, uh, and sometimes uh, an exhibition opportunities. So, um, this exhibition is called Work, People, Art. It's sort of playing off of the WPA, the Works Progress Administration uh, logo. And the idea was, with the federal government, by enlisting these different art programs, was not just to provide relief to artists, but to kind of offer the uh, America a sort of new vision of what might be possible, to bring hope, and inspiration to a population in this country that was struggling uh, to have to have themselves be reflected in the current times and the current era uh, by these artistic expressions uh, that you see here in this exhibit. So much to say about this time period, the work of the show, but just to give you an idea of how it's organized, uh, the exhibition, as you said, was referred to as work people art. Um, so this selection here of six pieces, and I hope you come see the exhibit after seeing this little gallery talk. Um, it's kind of set up along this theme, so we have the work, uh, um, Harry Sternberg and Max Kahn. Um, the idea that the WPA really emphasized like the common man, the laborer, and the sort of, you know, not the, the strength and the, and the sort of character of the working class. This is really heavily influenced by a Mexican muralist from the 1920s on up, uh, which recently has been talked about at the Whitney and their Vida Americana exhibit, uh, which talked about the really profound influence of uh, Mexican modernism and that attention to uh, workers, farmers, indigenous populations, the idea that the common man and woman has a voice and has a presence. Um, the people, uh, there's, two, there's a print by uh, Elizabeth Olds and a photograph by Nathan Lerner, a miner and a miner's wife, again, giving that uh, presence to uh, the sort of common man, which was a real theme of the time period of the 1930s during the WPA. And then the art, uh, we have this Stuart Davis and Alinka Herdy uh, print. 
Because the other aspect of this was um, the WPA, the Federal Art Project, uh, while it wanted artists to reflect the time period, it also gave them some uh, ability to experiment. Uh, they were looking at some European modernism, they were looking at Mexican muralists, uh, they were developing their own idea of what an American sort of scene painting might be, and they were combining all these ways with abstraction, uh, you know, taking the landscape in Alinka Herde's piece, Good Earth, and uh, making it into this beautiful sort of undulating um, series of sort of uh, forms so that kind of brings to mind the George O'Keeffe's work. And of course, Stuart Davis with this wonderful abstraction here, uh, New Jersey landscape. Um, so while it had this uh, attention to the worker and the, the lives of working people, it also had this equal sort of focus on experimentation uh, in the art. So the question is, what is a WPA style? What is the style of art during this time period? And there are sort of two, not really competing, but parallel and sometimes complementary ideas around what uh, uh, the art could do at this particular time period. And the art really did do something. And one of them was this idea of regional uh, uh, or American scene painting. And the other was this idea of social realism. And they, like I say, they really are in opposition. They're really not in opposition to each other. Um, Oftentimes they were looking to the experience of uh, life in America at the time, but maybe just a slightly different focus. Uh, American scene was, uh, in some ways, seen today as being a little bit more conservative. Uh, artists were looking for what they thought of was, was a distinct American style. In sort of reaction to what was happening with modernism coming out of Europe, uh, but um, in particular, looking towards the experience of rural and small town life as the sort of source of inspiration in this work. And then the social realist, um, we're looking at kind of more of an urban situation and oftentimes looking at the sort of uh, the struggle for families, for workers, for farmers, for miners, uh, oftentimes with a bit of critique about the situation of contemporary life oftentimes maybe focusing more on the troubles, the difficulties, the, the areas of like, conflict within contemporary life. And these two pieces, uh, both by Illinois artist, Messina Barton in her loaves, and uh, Raymond Brynan, um, sort of exemplify this American scene and social realism. And, uh, and they both have a kind of focus on farming or like the idea that this is the breadbasket of the United States. Uh, Messina Barton takes this very humble, simple table, not probably 19th century table with these turned legs, piles it with loaves and this jug of probably good beer or something, you know, maybe some cider. And she's made it monumental. Um, it probably owes quite a bit of a debt to the Mexican muralist and this idea of taking the humble subject and making it monumental. Uh, this piece quite literally like rises like a giant above this beautiful, serene landscape in the background, uh, making this a sort of heroic moment. And Raymond Brynan in this piece called Dead Tree, which has a sort of surreal quality to it, it's an airless, uh, dark, kind of foreboding place, and um, it almost feels like it might be like a set design, you know, for it could have been like an Agnes de Villa ballet or something like that. But what was happening in the United States, especially in the Central Plains, was the Dust Bowl. Um, this time of sort of severe uh, climate reaction where uh, crops were failing, where huge uh, clouds of dust were choking the air. And in some ways, he takes the promise of the fertile land and makes it into this sort of horrific, sad, gothic moment, uh, devoid of life and devoid of hope. So this painting by Thorvald Hoyer, Sunday on the Farm, is also, again, within this American scene idea, but it has this wonderful sort of naive, maybe a little bit primitive feel to it. And uh, Hoyer is a really interesting artist because he came from Denmark. Um, and uh, had some formal art training 
in, in Copenhagen, but primarily worked as a circus performer, as a kind of doing uh, uh, this tumbling and, and acrobatic act. Uh, and when he came to Chicago, uh, was a musician, but also started to do painting. And one of the aspects of the WPA was it did not necessarily require that you be a formally trained artist. Um, so this, in fact, the WPA, the different art projects, uh, focused quite a bit on the idea of American design and American, what we would call, what was called at the time, primitive art. We sort of refer to it now as sort of self-taught or vernacular art. Um, there was this index of American design where artists went around and drew and painted important pieces of like folk art, vernacular art, uh, furniture and objects like that. So there was a real uh, appreciation at the time for this, uh, again, that kind of simple, maybe humble, uh, grassroots, folk, whatever you might want to call it, but it was taken seriously. And maybe in the first time in American art history, this idea of the untrained artist, the non-academic artist, was given some credit. So this is a group of pieces that again fit into this American scene idea. Um, but I guess one of the cautions about American scene is it's sort of thought of as perhaps being kind of nostalgic and, and uh, uh, sweet or maybe even kind of acute, you know, sort of uh, approach to looking at work. And actually there was, there was some playing around with ideas of like energy, of abstraction, of mood in this particular work. So um, I think some of the American scene artists uh, were often dealing with satire. Um, they were maybe dealing with some uh, notions about abstraction within their work. And you can kind of see it in this little group here. Uh, William Schwartz is definitely someone who looked to uh, modernist and some cubist and probably Picasso or Cezanne as well within his work, kind of taking the landscape and moving it into these planes of color and shape. Um, uh, there's a real angularity to it. Um, Russell Limbach, his Flynn's barn, this wonderful barn that's just kind of like leaning off to one side, ready to collapse. Uh, again, the vernacular architecture, the scene, the, 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 the moment in time. It's almost as if, the, like the economy, like this farm is about ready to fall over. Um, and other people like um, uh, uh, this artist here, who's uh, Marguerite uh, Dorglo, with her house and garden, which of course is this you know, journal that is about the splendor of the home and garden. And she gives, again, this really kind of gothic dark particular moment here, which I think is indicative of uh, maybe what's working in the back of some of these artists' minds is that while we're working towards, you know, recovery of the economy, there's still this sense of this, like, um, like a, a gothic story that there's still a little bit of dread hanging over the moment. And then uh, Anne Nicola has this this is probably one of the sweetest sort of scenes in the whole exhibition of these children at play during recess. That was kind of more within the popular taste. Um, these artists, as I mentioned, would make work to then be, uh, in, in a sense for like their payment, their monthly payment as, as being on the relief roll. Prints were considered a particular way to get a message out. They were uh, more democratic. Unlike the paintings or the paintings we've seen, there's one, and unless it's in an exhibition, you don't see it. But artists, uh, print shops around the country and artists who are working with prints really found a way in which to get their message out to a much larger group of people. And there was a sort of tendency among the WPA administrators to favor probably these little more sort of sweet, nostalgic images as opposed to maybe the more gothic and, and uh, somewhat troubling images. But I want to talk about the social realist as well too, and there are three prints here which uh, uh, sort of speak to this idea of social realism. Uh, Boris Gorlach, Joseph Vavik, and Virginia Carr, and especially these two, Boris Gorlach's Sweatshop and Joseph Vavik Give, um, are uh, many of the artists that were involved with the WPA, as well as many of the administrators, were kind of left or slightly left of center in their politics. Many of them were socialist, many of them were communist. And this was a, 
really kind of in the zeitgeist of the time was people were thinking this capitalist system may not be working so well and maybe we should be thinking about like who the, who's in need and, and what are the needs of production. So there was a real emphasis on the idea about uh, industry and capitalism and its role in the lives of everyday people. And Boris Gorlick in his sweatshop uh, gives us this like multi-scened moment. So it's a sweatshop which is where primarily women, many of them were immigrant women or uh, women of color, would have been working for piecework to put garments together. Uh, uh, the working conditions are pretty horrible. And within this we have these women over a sewing machine, several sewing machines, they all have these gaunt, haunted look to their face. And sort of standing in the middle is this sort of abstracted dress dummy, you know, the form for which the thing that they're making, which they probably couldn't afford to buy on their own, this becomes the sort of guardian or sentinel over this uh, scene. So Gorlick is really talking about this idea about sweat equity and, and inequity, sweat inequity at this time period. And Joseph Vavak in his 1940 print Give, which is really happening at the tail end of the Depression, when essentially the, the assumption is, or the the thinking is that the economy is recovering, he's still pointing to the fact that, you know, as humans, we need to give and give to each other and be aware and, and present for those that are in need. And these are two very strong aspects of social realism. Uh, Virginia Carr's uh, monoprint called The Slave Market is a very, very point of critique of uh, the particular time period. Um, she's not referring to enslaved people, like African American slavery, but uh, she's making that judgment of the current situation in her time of domestic workers, who for, without very little control, very little training, uh, were uh, essentially put into service to work in people's homes. Um, during the Depression, there was actually a very, very important study that was produced in, I think it was 1935, by Ella Baker and Marvel Cook, the Bronx slave market, which looked at the plight of women of color uh, trying to find work as domestic servants or domestic help at homes, and how out of work white women, or white women from whose husbands had lost, lost their jobs, were displacing women of color during this time period as domestic help. So within this print and within the history of the time period, you get this very complicated and very pointed critique of the situation that, especially for women, where there was very little regulation of the industry around like, you know, domestic help, being a maid, being a cook, um, that these situations were really at the mercy of whoever had the money and whoever had the control to say how much you're going to make and who's going to make that money. So this print by Dox Thrash is kind of an important print. Dox was an Af African-American artist who was uh, based out of uh, Philadelphia with the print uh, workshop or the, the print shop in Philly and um, did this piece called Defense Worker. Uh, the WPA hired uh, as part of the Federal Art Project included women on the role as well as uh, artists of color. The question about equity, which is really on the minds of everybody today in terms of like uh, the art world, um, is uh, it's a good question to raise when looking at the WPA. It was not necessarily an equitable uh, situation by any means. As I mentioned before, many of the artists involved and many of the administrators were a little bit more left in their, in their thinking. And one of the things they were very clear about was inequity within this country in terms of race and gender. It was often seen in terms of capitalism, uh, so not necessarily around racial injustice and about um, uh, uh, that kind of inequality within this country and about prejudice and racial injustice. Uh, Doc Thrash used, especially he also worked in the uh, shipyards in Philadelphia, and used the subject of his sort of fellow workers in his prints, and really trying to show the African-American worker as a, 
important uh, and vital part of the war effort and the, uh, the, the start of the war effort in the 1940s and also at the end of the Depression in terms of the economic recovery. Um, he was very, very critical of the position of uh, blacks in this country and tried along with some, several artists, including uh, Raymond Steff, to draw attention to the fact of racial inequality within this country. Within Chicago, the Southside Community Arts Center was a center that was started by and for the black community and for black artists. It was, uh, as an initiative, it was partially funded by the WPA as one of the oldest WPA um, uh, art centers uh, remaining in the country, one of the oldest African American centers, art centers in this country. Uh, and it was predicated on this idea of uh, community, uh, an art center for the black community in which they themselves can work and teach and come together and create the expression needed for their particular community. There was also a, an emphasis on the idea about pleasure and about um, entertainment and about art and its role within the country. Uh, in addition to putting artists on the relief role as a way of providing them support, the um, Works Project Administration, the New Deal administrators also really felt that um, art had a, way, had a place to provide, um, that art should really be something to be provided for anybody at any, any place within the American culture, and not just for the elite, but like within museums, within an urban area. Um, so there's, uh, among the work, there's also these sort of wonderful moments of, of, uh, of theatrical moments that show up, because uh, that was a really strong part of the WPA. There was a federal uh, theater project, and one of the things that the, the uh, the theater project did was put together, often through marionette shows, free programs for communities across the country. Uh, and this lovely little print here by Aileen Fruhoff called Marionette Rehearsal is um, kind of evokes that particular time period. She was doing a series of um, portraits of people in the New York art scene that was meant, I think, was to be published in a magazine or a book. So in some ways, they are portraits and caricatures of that. But it also gives you the sense of these uh, three young people with their marionettes putting together a little theater production, probably for the kids, at a particular art center or a particular community center. Um, Julia Tekla from Chicago uh, was an artist who sort of, along with Gertrude Abercrombie and many, many other women like Messina Barton, kind of credit the WPA as giving them their first real um, uh, push or uh, shot in the arm for being an artist. Uh, the fact that they were enrolled and paid was for them uh, sort of the start uh, of their career. And Julia was a very quiet and somewhat eccentric artist in her own life, but very much immersed in the world of dance within Chicago. Um, she did set designs for choreographers and costume designs for choreographers here in town. And this little black bunny was a, a symbol of hers that she used, that was kind of her stand-in for herself. And here she is visiting her friend Mary, who was one of the ballet dancers that she new uh, backstage who you're not quite sure if it's a real scene or a dream scene uh, but it's a very very lovely moment somewhat in contrast to the starker more pointed maybe more political moments that you see in the exhibition but equally important for this time period so the legacy of the new deal when the program was disbanded in 1943 the the tally of works produced nationally was staggering and I'm going to read you some of these statistics real quickly. But the final report said that approximately 5,000 artists produced over 2,500 murals, about 17,000 sculptures, over 108,000 paintings, 11,000 designs, and who knows how many prints and posters were produced during this time period. It's really an outstanding production. And this is just really a small selection of uh, what was done during that time period. Uh, sort of limited it to what we have in our permanent collection, which I still think is pretty astounding. We have over uh, 400 pieces in our collection. 
So I hope you enjoyed this bit of a ramble through the exhibition here, and I hope it inspires you to come see uh, this exhibition, Work People Art, from the Illinois State Museum Collection here at the Ukrainian Institute of Modern Art. The exhibition is up through May 16th, so please come by. Thank you.